required by law. So I've been working in my profession now for about 13 years. And my journey of working in my profession has been one hell of a journey. Um, if you're not familiar with my story as a whistleblower in the U.S. Air Force, I'll give you a little short version. So I stated and part of my job was to protect the people. In doing so, any materials that were brought on base, I had to approve them. Over time, I started to realize that things were coming on base that were not being acquired the way they were supposed to be. Um, if you see carcinogenic materials that you normally would remove from a workplace, you tend to question why are they being brought on base in mass quantities to secret locations. And when you ask questions, you were demonized. So what happened to me was I started asking questions because I started to put everything together and realize that what everyone here knows as chemtrails, which is actually called geoengineering, was occurring. This was a long battle that I dealt with. A lot of ethics in my job and saying, should I expose this? Should I not expose this? I was worried about my livelihood. I was worried about being blackballed in my profession. But that one thing that kept me driving was that oath that I took. And that oath told me that I needed to blow the whistle. I needed to to tell everyone what was going on. In an attempt to do it within the proper channels, I was threatened to be thrown into a mental institution. Somebody who had no bad record in the military, made her rank the first time every time. I was now what you view as being demonized as a veteran. I was not allowed to do my job. So that whole ordeal in the Air Force woke me up. I call it my mass awakening. Because in learning what was going on from we're trying to protect people to now we're finding people have cancer or we have finding people are getting sick and we're, we're going to cover it up and we're going to shred papers. I decided that if I was going to work in this profession, I was going to work for myself and I was going to do the right thing. And that's why today I wanted to talk to you briefly about informed consent. Today you're going to hear about vaccines. I'm sure you've heard about GMOs. There are a lot of double standards between the private industry and the government. What do I mean by that? As citizens of this country, we have things forced upon us. Personally, I do not drink fluoridated water. An example, in my job, I would have to make sure that people are not ingesting, injecting, or having contact with sodium fluoride. However, municipalities, villages, and government put it in the water. Who here has a problem with that? Yeah. So it's that selective enforcement. So when you're dealing with healthcare, vaccines, what's put into our food, it is hard for somebody in, in my profession, and there is a lot of us, to say we have neurotoxins that are put into food, into medicine. How many people here are aware that aluminum is a neurotoxin. Well, aluminum is used in that climate engineering, which is called solar radiation management. How many people know that aluminum actually can make you lose your hearing? That's called being autotoxic. So that's another one of those provisions where I find an issue with doing my profession it's standing by and watching the government 
contradict everything that the government taught me. So with the selective enforcement, what does that do with you? Well, for you, it means that you need to be an advocate for you and your family and the people in your community. The biggest hurdle in being an advocate for yourself and others is facing how people view you, facing being demonized, facing being attacked or being called a conspiracy theorist. But there are things that you can do at the local level. You can run for small office in your area. You can get information from websites like geoengineeringwatch.org, childhood shots. You know, there's different health and safety professions and medical professions that help all the information for you. And you can use that information to go to local villages, town halls, and you can educate people. You can be that brush fire that is injected that wakes up the masses. There was a time where I thought that what I say no one's going to care about. No one's going to care what I have to say. I'm absolutely nobody. But I can tell you over the past three years, I have got more people involved, woken up more people within my profession and in the federal government, and I have done more in these civilian boots than I did in combat boots for nine years. So I just really, really want to tell you guys that I really appreciate everyone that has come here. It seems so minor to show up at an event like this, but the fact that you came here, whether you are questioning everything I'm saying, or you're questioning something that the next speaker will say, the point is, is that you're being open-minded. And what you need to do is share, share, share. Share as much information as you can, because even when people are not, you think you're, they're not paying attention, they're at least listening. And I guarantee you that you are going to spark passion inside of somebody that you never thought you would. So if anyone has any questions for me why I'm here today, yes. I was thinking about doing like a So the question was, this gentleman was looking to inquire to do a FOIA request. And I can tell you that that has been done. I have done it. And all I got was redacted information. But one thing that you can do is call the FAA. Because currently, many of you would be shocked to hear this, there is no law that says you cannot use aerosol dispersant in the U.S. Meaning, if I wanted to, I could go up and spray without permission, without a permit, without any approval. Now, make something happen to me, of course. But this is how people are, are able to get away with this. So, you can always do a FOIA request, and maybe we'll get the versions of mine that were redacted. But what, if you really want to make change, what I would tell you to do is drive the OSHA and EPA representatives in your area crazy by the amount of emails that you send, the letters that you send, or grab them the minute they walk out the door. Because I think the only way that we're going to stop this is by waking up the people in my profession who are hired to actually keep these hazardous materials out of our bodies. Is there any other questions? No? All right, well, I'd really like to thank everyone for letting me be here, and I hope everyone sticks around for the rest of the day, comes to the after party, and I'll be floating around asking a lot of questions that maybe you're afraid to ask now. So thank you.